Baker Mayfield got traded to the Panthers. The only reason we're talking about it is because Jimmy Garoppolo is still on the 49ers. And obviously, this is another seat in musical chairs that was filled. So now, what do you think this means for the Jimmy Garoppolo saga with the 49ers? And how do you think this ends now that one of the viable options for them is taken off the books? I think now it, it, it does make it a lot – at least I was talking with John Chapman earlier today. He thought it makes it easier for – or he makes the Garoppolo trade market a little more likely. I, I uh, think the opposite. I think that it makes it a little less likely because right now the only team, in my opinion, that is really in, uh, uh, like looking for Garoppolo services is the Cleveland Browns, realistically. A lot of people have pointed out the Seattle Seahawks. My objection to that is that the Seattle Seahawks – if they sign Jimmy Garoppolo or trade for Jimmy Garoppolo, they elevate their floor for 2022, and they're stuck in a in misery for the year after because they don't have anywhere to go. Garoppolo likely leaves after next year. I don't think he signs an extension there because he wants to be in a place that better uh, surrounds him with weapons. And I think that uh, after maybe a seven and ten season or a six and eleven season. Guess what? You're not in the range for one of the top quarterbacks in a, top, in a quarterback heavy class next year, and that might rebuild back a little more. I think the best way for the Carolina, or sorry, for the Seattle Seahawks to rebuild and get back to contention is getting a top draft pick next year, getting your quarterback of the future, and surrounding that quarterback with talent like you have right now in DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, and the running back game, uh, the running game that you have right there in Seattle. So to me, I don't think Seattle is in the market for Jimmy Garoppolo, be it via trade or be it via uh, a, a release by the 49ers. And additionally, if Garoppolo is released by the 49ers, uh, I don't think he'd pick Seattle. I don't think that he believes Seattle's offensive line would help him secure his next contract just because they're not as good as the uh, Cleveland Browns offensive line. And when we talk about the Cleveland Browns, I don't think a trade will happen, but I wouldn't be too surprised by it. First of all, I don't think they have any incentive to trade for him. They're the primary favorites to get him. And normally when you trade for a player, it's because you might not believe he comes to you on the open market. The Cleveland Browns have the best infrastructure around their quarterback. And so I think Jimmy Garoppolo would be more inclined to go there because he can, first of all, get money. They have $48 million in salary or in, uh, in cap space still available after the move of Baker Mayfield, more than double of the next team. Second of all, he gets a starting opportunity. And third of all, he's around one of the best offensive lines in the league, uh, one of the best running back groups in the league, and has a true wide receiver one like he had in San Francisco and Amari Cooper over there in Cleveland with the potential to add more to that wide receiver room as well. So I personally don't think a trade market will materialize. But like I said, Cleveland has the money to shoulder it. It's all just a matter of does San Francisco eat money in this deal, which I definitely would not like, and does San Francisco get adequate compensation in return after seeing what the compensation for Baker Mayfield was? Absolutely. And Beto from Nine and Sickness is on. Beto, I don't know if you caught, caught the beginning, but we unleashed uh, the intro video that we made for you, man. Gave you a lot of props for it. Thank you so much for that. And uh, definitely go subscribe to Nine and Sickness. He has a, you know, a great YouTube channel over there. And, you know, one of the nicest guys in the 49er community. Just uh, just a good guy, man. Great story. Love that uh, I, I was I had an opportunity to meet him. And, you know, he's already helped me out quite a bit. So thank you, Beto, for being in the show. Yeah, yeah I mean. Out. Sorry, Ron. Go ahead. No, I was just saying shout out to him. I, uh, yeah, great guy, too. He's just a chill guy that you can kick it with. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, I mean. I, I think I, I agree with you, man. I really don't see a path to where Jimmy Garoppolo is traded at this point. You know, uh, I completely agree with you as far as your analysis of the Seattle Seahawks. I don't think they're looking to win now. I mean, one, they haven't re-signed DK Metcalf, right? So that that is, you know, still there. You know, they're not, uh, you know, in a, any rush to do that. You know, they, they traded away their best player in Russell Wilson. They got a bunch of draft picks for that. Like you said, this upcoming draft is, is one of the drafts where, similar to, you know, uh, the draft a few years ago, the one that we got Trey in, is a very good quarterback class. Like, a lot of people are looking and seeing that class with multiple bona fide uh, high-level starters 
that are going to be coming into the league. So I think that if you're um, Pete Carroll, you're looking for your ability to to win back that team, right? You want to build that team again back in your mold because I think there was a lot of friction between him and Russell Wilson because Russell Wilson had become a superstar in the league. So Pete Carroll couldn't just, you know, throw his weight around anymore. And I think Pete Carroll's trying to get back to that. Uh, the issue with only having one option now is what what is the what is the benefit right now for Cleveland to give up an asset? Like, I don't think they want to take on the contract. And I don't think the 49ers want to pay any of that contract either. So it really doesn't make sense at this point why the why there would be a, a trade like. Cleveland isn't desperate. At the end of the day, they already have another quarterback on the books that they're paying in Jacoby Brissett. They're already paying $10 million towards um, towards Baker Mayfield's contract. I don't know exactly how much they're paying th- towards Deshaun Watson, but I know based off of that contract and that it's fully guaranteed, it's a lot of money. And then they want to pay, even if you have $48 million, do you want to really use 25 of that $48 million towards a quarterback that isn't going to be part of your future? Or would you rather just roll over that $48 million into next season and use that to really bring in, um, you know, some you use that in the free agent market or to help your cap out in the future? I really just think that they'd rather just wait and see if the 49ers cut them and then get Jimmy Garoppolo on whatever contract they want to offer Jimmy Garoppolo. So for me, I think, I, I think when we've talked about this earlier, Rohan, I said... I'm pretty sure he gets cut because I just think that at this point, the 49ers would rather have that 25 million um, to roll over into next off season, specifically because they have so many free agents after this year, um, rather than keeping Jimmy. But my question to you is we've also heard the 49ers talk about, they're not going to give Jimmy up for nothing. And they've already allotted money to be able to pay and pay for him um, if they needed to keep him. Now, we thought that that was just conjecture and just kind of posturing to be able to maybe get some more on the trade market. However, those games are over, right? You can't you, – there's no way to build up Jimmy's value at this point. How much do you believe Shanahan and Lynch when they say these things? Is there a possibility that Jimmy Garoppolo into, is going in to week one – on the roster for the 49ers. And before I answer that question, on your point about the cut, the one reason that I said I wouldn't be surprised, and I'll just say this to see what you think. Um, Jose Sanchez of all uh, 49ers SI tweeted something today that caught my attention and I actually agree with. There is one way, I think, that the 49ers uh, do end up trading Jimmy Garoppolo to a team like the Cleveland Browns. Now, the 49ers and Jimmy Garoppolo are in an impasse because his salary for this year is non-guaranteed. The entirety of the $24.2 million that he's owed in salary is non-guaranteed, meaning the 49ers can cut him right before week one and not have to pay anything to Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy Garoppolo, that would be his worst nightmare because guess what? You don't have a team before week one, and you don't have the entirety of training camp to integrate yourself in another team's offense to get the ball rolling starting week one. Now, saying that the Cleveland Browns, if they don't believe Jacoby Brissett is the answer, which goes against what we've heard so far from Ian Rappaport, who says the Cleveland Browns are confident in Jacoby Brissett, if they don't believe he's the answer to start this year, the the Cleveland Browns could look to trade for Jimmy Garoppolo for the sole reason of getting him earlier than that end of uh, end the end of the training camp deadline, because then they have the two weeks of practice where they can implement Jimmy Garoppolo into their offense, which shouldn't be too hard given the similarities between Kyle Shanahan and uh, uh, Kevin Stefanski's offense. That could be the the, the two week trial period where you get involved with your offensive line, you get involved with your wide receivers. That is the one instance where I can see Garoppolo getting traded. Cleveland needs a quarterback because we don't believe uh, Brissett can lead them to a playoff contending team in 2022. Because I think even though you can wait for another year when Deshaun Watson is healthy, I think in the NFL, the championship window gets slimmer and slimmer by the year. 
I think you have to attack every single opportunity. And even if Garoppolo isn't your quarterback next year, he provides you the chance to give you a playoff contending team this year, which the Cleveland Browns, I think, are looking to take, especially after missing the playoffs in uh, last year. Because guess what? With the salary cap explosion, with the amount of cap space that they're set to have, they might be able to attract free agents. And it's likelier that they get big name free agents if they make the playoffs as opposed to missing out in a competitive division. So that's where I can see the Cleveland Browns potentially trading for Jimmy Garoppolo. But then again, that means the 49ers wouldn't do right by their player if that's not the case by releasing him after training camp as opposed to once he's healthy uh, for Jimmy Garoppolo, which I'm fine with. But also that means that they wouldn't be confident in Jacoby Brissett, which goes against the status quo and that uh, the 49ers and then uh, the Cleveland Browns can come to an agreement not only on how much money Jimmy Garoppolo uh, gets paid by the Cleveland Browns, but also compensation, which the 49ers have been stubborn. Yeah, and I mean, there's some good points that are being made because I think all of that is in an ideal situation, but there are a few yeah. things that need to – dominoes need to fall first. And the first one is what Beto's saying. Jimmy needs to start throwing the ball, right? We haven't seen any videos of Jimmy throwing the ball. Uh, I'm sure teams haven't seen any videos of th Jimmy throwing the ball. I think they need to when, – when those videos start coming out of Jimmy, you know, throwing the ball around and seeing, hey, what the velocity looks like, how does his, you know, how does his uh, throwing motion look like, how does he look overall – that might change the market, but um, Fernando says something as well that might play a big role. What this happens with Deshaun Watson, right? What if Deshaun Watson isn't suspended for a year and he might only be suspended for six games? I think yeah. that kills the market for Jimmy then with Cleveland, right? Yeah. Because at that point, you'd rather just go with uh, Jacoby Brissett. You mentioned, you know, there are reports from guys like Ian Rapport that um, that Jacoby Brissett is somebody that Cleveland is willing to ride with. If it's just a short term, um, you know, six games or so like that, and then you know they'll have Deshaun Watson. Why would you invest twenty four million and an asset in somebody where you probably don't even need them? You only need them for the first six games. And if you're going a healthy Jacoby Brissett versus Jimmy Garoppolo, higher contract, need to give an asset up. Plus, is coming off of shoulder surgery. I'm going with Jacoby Brissett all day in that situation. So. Yeah. Oh, real quick, just to add to that uh, before you continue, who do the Browns play in the first six weeks? It's not that hard of a schedule. You play Carolina, which is going to be interesting, but you play the New York Jets. You play the Steelers, who likely will be fourth place in that division. You play the Atlanta Falcons. That is four fairly, fairly uh, beatable uh, or viable opponents, even with Jacoby Brissett, before you face the Los Angeles Chargers and the New England Patriots. So they could end up being four and two. With Jacoby Brissett. So that's a good point, but continue on. No, I mean, but that leads me, and, you know, I think Andrew, uh, thank you so much for coming on. A real big, you know, a, a, a guy that always is supporting us content creators. But I know Andrew is a big proponent for Jimmy Garoppolo, and I can't be mad at him, even though I really think that having Jimmy on this roster uh, is just going to be toxic, not because Jimmy's toxic. Not because Trey's toxic, not even because the locker room's toxic. I just think it's a really bad look for how the coaching staff, especially Kyle Shanahan and um, John Lynch, have just openly discussed how much they wanted to trade Jimmy. And I just think that's a tough look for Jimmy to have to come back and 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 fight for a, a, a position there. I just I just don't know at this point. Um, I just don't know at this point, like cutting him. Is just it's tough because at the end of the day, Jimmy is better than Nate Sudfield as far as you know in the hierarchy of quarterbacks. But is Jimmy going to be willing to sit on the bench and, and be a backup to to for a team that he's taken to two NFC Championship games and a Super Bowl in the last three years? That's just really tough at this point um, with all like really no real options there. Yeah, and that's the that leads to your original question. I forgot. Rephrase it and tell me what you were asking uh, before uh, we we went back in a tangent about the. Yeah, uh, I mean, just like is there is there a scenario where Jimmy Garoppolo's a 49er come week one? One thing Kyle Shanahan has told us, or not told us, but really taught us with his actions, he can never say never. 
I thought there was a hundred percent possible, a hundred percent chance that Jimmy Garoppolo was going to be moved by March 16th, the start of the new league year. But then again, never say never. Trade talks halted. I think he honestly would have been traded had he not gotten uh, that surgery uh, uh, just a week before uh, free agency. But really, you never say never because right now I don't know if Nick Bosa is going to be extended. Uh, uh, with the roster, I think Debo Samuel will be extended, but I think Nick Bosa might want to wait. But regardless, I think you can still fit both extensions in with the 2022 cap with minimal moves, if not any moves uh, required. You might need to make one move uh, as a salary cap uh, for salary cap help uh, with the current. You might even need to make a single move. So if we're just talking salary cap semantics, right now the 49ers have proven that they can roster a sufficient. Uh, like a, a sufficient talent on both sides of the ball with Jimmy Garoppolo still being on the team. And like you said, he is a better backup than Nate Sudfeld. The one thing that I'll say to that is where do you see in the NFL where there's such superior backup quarterbacks, right? Normally every, regardless of how the talent is at quarterback, every single team's uh, season is predicated on their starting quarterback success. And while the backup quarterback has played an important role obviously Nick Foles back in 2017. Really, in my opinion, starting quarterbacks, if they're gone, your season is over. And so does that, uh, like, does that philosophy justify paying Jimmy Garoppolo that amount of money, hindering not only uh, other roster moves, maybe you might even have to make another roster move to accommodate salaries, like I said, but also hindering the carryover for next year where you could have saved 25 more million in a year where you might want to spend even more because 2023 might be that year for Trey Lance when he's fully developed uh, to go for a championship and you lose out on that money because you're having Jimmy Garoppolo in the roster. And so it's things like that. It is a tough decision because there is benefit, right, with keeping him. You get a backup uh, quarterback on a salary that you've already accommodated for and you get a comp pick, right, that third round compensatory pick, which somehow the 49ers do seem to value. Yeah, and it's probably going to be the highest pick that you'd get in any kind of trade at this point as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we could go on for this for, you know, hours. I mean, I still think that the best situation is 49ers cutting him because I really think that the locker room would just be not good. And I want Trey to not have any battle for first. I just, he needs all the reps. Like Trey is the future. You've already given up so many picks for him. You've, you've, You've created a new coaching staff around him. You know, he just needs all the starts, all the reps at this point, all the starts at this point. And I think that $24 million is going to be very important. I don't – there's there's a lot of good players on this team, Rohan, that are on one-year deals or their, their contract is up after this year. So having an extra $48 million to work with next offseason I think will be very, very important. So, And not yeah. only that, last point that I'll make on this topic before we move on is – you said Trey Lance needs reps, but guess what? If Jimmy Garoppolo is playing during training camp, where does he take away? He takes away from Nate Tudfell and he takes away from Brock Purdy. Right now, the one thing about those two quarterbacks, they haven't gotten reps at all. Nate Sudfeld was a practice squad quarterback last year. He hasn't played with uh, the first or the second team. He's played with the third team for his for the majority of his 49ers career. This year was the first time where he was the second team quarterback, and he hasn't gotten enough reps either. He only uh, got reps in OTAs. I think he needs more reps as his second team quarterback, and that's the only, where, only way where you'll find out, can this guy truly be our backup quarterback for 2022? So if you, by any, by any for some reason, want to keep Garoppolo, I think you hold him out of everything. Training camp, preseason, get Sudfeld the reps that he needs, get Purdy the reps that he needs, and if one of them prove viable, guess what? You move on from Garoppolo, install that guy as your second quarterback. If one of them doesn't prove viable, if neither of them do, then maybe you have a discussion about that. But still, like you, I agree that the best situation is just to be cut. 